Hello there, Michelle Short here for My Favourite Things. Today I'm creating a Friendship Off The Edge card. So let's get started. This is the image that I'm going to have hanging off the top edge of the card base. This is the adorable little mouse from the Odd Couple stamp set. This stamp set I guess is more kind of traditional sort of Valentine's but I think it works really well for friendship cards and other occasions as well. So I'm going to place that in the mini misty here and I'm going to stamp that down onto some white cardstock using extreme black ink. I'm going to stamp this a few times just so that I get a really nice dark impression. So I'm just inking up that stamp really well and then I can press down onto that white cardstock. I don't want to press too hard in case I distort the image. I would rather stamp it a few times and then rather than distort the image on the first attempt if that makes sense so like i said i'm just going to stamp this a few times i do apologize for the camera shaking a little bit at this point i am pressing down a little bit harder now just again so i get that nice impression i'm then going to color the image with copic markers for the mouse itself, I'm going to use some toner greys. I don't use these a huge amount. I tend to gravitate towards the cool greys and the warm greys the most. But I really love these toner greys because they're still on the slightly warmer side um, compared to like the cool tones, but not as warm as the warm tones and not as neutral as the neutral greys. So I quite like these toner greys. My T7 is really quite juicy so I'm being really careful here trying not to add too much onto the image but I do find that sometimes if your marker is really juicy if you take both ends off of the marker it kind of um, equalizes the pressure inside of the Copic marker so that's what I did for that that's why I was coloring without the other end of the marker on. I'm then speeding this process up a little bit. It is really quite simple Copic colouring. I'm then going in with T5 to blend that out. And then here I'm using the T3 just to blend that out again. And then for my lightest shade, I'm using the T1. And I'm going over the inside of the ears and also his little tummy there. And then off screen, I did colour in the tail with the T3 marker. For the ears and the little belly, I'm going to colour that with pink tones. Ordinarily, I would probably go for something a little bit more kind of like on the corally side pink rather than this kind of bright pink that I'm using here. But because this image is going on a white card base, I really wanted it to pop off of the card base. So I'm going in with slightly brighter colours than I probably ordinarily would. So I'm using the RV55 and then I'm blending that out with the RV52. And I do go between the two shades just to get the colour saturation that I want. And then for the balloons, I'm using some aqua tones. So I'm starting off with the BG15. I then blend that out with the BG13 and then the BG11. I do then go in afterwards because I wanted it to be slightly darker with the BG49. So this is the BG11 and it is a little bit um, difficult sometimes to blend the BG13 with the BG11 because they are quite a lot different in colour shade. So I'm going in kind of tip to tip and that means that I'm kind of pressing the tip of the BG11 marker into the BG13 and then that's just going to make it so that that colour is slightly darker because they're alcohol markers the colour does rub off quite easily I just kind of blended that off on a scrap piece of paper and then I do go back in with that BG49 like I said just to darken that up slightly. I'm then taking the coordinating die from the Odd Couple Dynamic set, placing that down with some low tack tape and running that through my die cutting machine. And then I've got the cute little mouse. I'm then taking the 
thank you for being a friend dynamic set and I've cut that three times from white card stock. One of them I have left in the negative space so that I can add some ink blending on top and I find that the easiest way to add the ink blending. So I'm taking some Peacock Feathers Distress Ink and I'm just adding that towards the bottom of the word. I want the top to still be fairly white. I don't mind if I get a light shade of the colour on the top but I didn't really want the darkest shade so I want kind of like an ombre look. So just adding the bulk of that colour like I said towards the bottom with an ink blending brush. Just going back over it a few times to get that saturation of colour that I want. And then I'm going to layer all of the dyes on top of each other. So I'm using some on point precision glue just adding small dabs of that onto the word here. I do find for some reason that it's a little bit easier for me to add the glue to the front of the die cut rather than the back and kind of lay them on top of each other in that way. I'm not quite sure why but for some reason that works for me. So I'm just taking the next friend word here and then placing that on top. The great thing about liquid glue is that I've got some time to wiggle them together, make sure that they're lined up as best as I can. Once that on point precision glue does dry, it does dry very strong, but I love that in the meantime I've got that wiggle room. So I can just add some more on top of this friend word again, and then I can add the top layer. So I'm just going to carefully remove that from the negative area, and then I can add that on top. I'm leaving the inside of the letters here just for a little bit extra stability and then I can remove those afterwards. So again I'm just going to take my time to line that up and I do find that once you've got one kind of lined up so it's too high I think the ones on top afterwards do line up a bit quicker for some reason. I'm then just going to pop out all of the inside pieces of those letters. And then I can also use that pokey tool just to go around the edges, make sure that I don't have any fuzzy bits from where the cardstock has been die cut. I'm then taking an A2 size white card base. So this is a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, although I am going to cut it down. I'm just placing my elements on the card so that I know where I want to stamp my accompanying sentiment. This is from the Itty Bitty Hugs and Kisses set. And this is such an amazing set because there are so many different sentiments in it. And a lot of them would work really well with the friend word. So my kind of whole sentiment is going to read friend sending love your way, but it could be so many different things like I said. I've placed the card in the mini misty here and picked up that sentiment with the misty door. I'm then taking a piece of plastic. This is actually quilter's plastic, but any kind of acetate or something like that would work. And what I do is I stamp down onto that acetate first so that I can make sure that the stamp is straight. And then once I'm happy, I can remove that acetate and then I can stamp onto the actual card base. So I'm stamping that down with some black ink. And I do get a really nice impression first time. So I can remove that from the misty and then I can add some more on point precision glue onto the back of the friend word. I'm going to dab off the excess glue here onto a scrap piece of paper and then I can add that onto the card base above that sending love your way sentiment. Once I'm happy with the placement I can just press that down and then I'm just going to grab an acrylic block to hold that down while the glue dries. I'm then going to add some dimension onto the back of my little mouse here. So I've cut two more die cuts just from white cardstock, but because I want to overlap where the feet are of the mouse with the top of the eye, I didn't want that extra little bit at the bottom. So I had to cut his feet off or her feet off, um, which always seems horrible to me but obviously in real life you wouldn't do that hopefully <laughs> um, so I'm just going to place them one on top of another that's going to give me that dimension instead of having to use little bits of foam tape 
So I'm just adding that on point precision glue between the layers and then I can layer those up. I know that the mouse is going to overlap the top of the card base so I actually want to cut the card base down so that it still fits in a standard sized envelope. So I'm grabbing an MFT envelope here that is a standard kind of A2 size and I'm just making sure that where I I'm eventually going to cut it, the hearts will still fit inside of the envelope. So I'm just placing my card there over the top. I'm going to grab a pencil and just add a little mark there so that I know where I want to cut it down. So the actual card overall is an A2 size, but the actual card base itself is a little bit smaller. I'm just adding some more on point precision glue onto the back of the mouse here and then I can place that mouse on top of the eye. I thought it worked quite well on top of the eye because where the tail is of the mouse works quite nicely fitting into that little gap above the R as well. thought it just worked out perfectly. And because that's going to overhang, I wanted that kind of stability with the layers of the cardstock as well. So it is really quite sturdy. I'm just adding some crystal glaze onto those balloons. That's just going to give a really nice shine. I add it into the middle of the balloon. And then I'm going to grab a pokey tool and just kind of move that crystal glaze out to the sides of the balloon. I find that that's a really quite good way of being able to get the crystal glaze across the image without having it go over the edge or something like that. So that's the card finished for today. I'm just bringing in that envelope there so that you can see that it's going to fit really nicely. I do really love having elements hanging over the edge of cards. I just think it looks quite nice. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Day.